Greetings children. Welcome to the online classes. This is Aishwarya. Please like and subscribe the channel for the further updated videos. The following video is for class 4, subject general science, chapter 10, sources of water, part 1. I hope by now you all have your textbooks with you and I request you to go to page number 85. We'll begin with the lessons, sources of water. Now, all living things need water to live, isn't it? So they need water to live and to reproduce. Why do we need water in our body? Because it keeps us hydrated. It is said that the human body is made of 70% of the body is made of water itself. So we need water. Our body requires water. Then we use water for household activities agricultural activities, industrial activities, etc. Water is not only just for drinking. We need it for cleaning our houses and cooking and for many activities we do at home. We need the water. Then agricultural activities. The plant grow well when there is good water quality. Isn't it? When you water it at the right time, when you give proper water to it, they will grow well. That shows that the water is important to plants and the agricultural activities. If there is no proper water supply to these fields or the, uh, the farmers, if there is no proper water supply, the plants will die and crops will not grow properly. So in the agricultural activities, we use a lot of water. Industrial activities. Industrial activities means when we have to produce anything uh, in a large quantity. If you're producing anything in a large quantity, that uh, is produced in the industries or factories. Okay. So to produce anything, we do require water. Okay that in that way we know that uh, we use water for different household activities agricultural activities and industrial activities and many more other activities also in our day-to-day -day life we uh, when we talk about water resources we are talking about what that we use now or that we use in the future now we are going to as the chapter says sources of water that means we are going to learn about what are these different sources of water how are they formed and how we can use it in our day-to-day -day life okay so first thing that you will learn about is the surface water s-u-r-f-a-c-e surface w-a-t-e-r surface water now surface this water refers to the water we see on the surface of the earth. Okay, like I, when you are uh, on the surface of the earth, there is underground water also. Okay, so the difference is this water is above, up on the surface of the earth. So we can see it clearly like the rivers, tanks, wells. Um, rivers means they all flow on the surface of the water, isn't it? So they are the surface water. The natural surface water sources are given below. As you have already learned about these resources in the previous year, let us recap by writing their definitions briefly in the space given below. Now here in your textbook in page number 86, on the uh, first top, they have given natural water sources, that is rivers, ponds, lakes, streams, wetlands. So we are going, I uh, on the screen, you can see small definitions of these uh, following water sources. So I will read it for you. I will explain it to you. Write it down in your textbook itself. Okay. So what are rivers? Rivers are flowing water bodies. You are in the next to the column of the rivers. You just write it as flowing water bodies. Rivers, they start in the mountain regions and they flow till the oceans. That is why they are called as the flowing water bodies. They always keep flowing until they reach the oceans. Now in the rivers, there are different kinds of rivers. Some are rain fed rivers, some are uh, snow fed rivers. Okay. Then the next one is ponds, small water bodies covered with land on all sides. Uh, I repeat, please write it down in the textbook. Small water bodies covered with land on all sides. That is called the 
ponds next is lakes l a k e s lakes means large water bodies covered with land on all the sides lakes means large water bodies covered with land on all the sides then streams streams means small flowing water bodies flowing water bodies these streams no they begin in the mountain regions and they flow into the river when these small streams join only it becomes a big river okay when this river flows down it goes down to the ocean these streams are the beginning of the rivers okay s t r e a m s streams what are streams small flowing water bodies then wetlands wetlands means a wetland is a distinct ecosystem that a uh, that is flooded by water either permanently or seasonally this wetland means usually it is most of the time it is just wet there is a lot of water there uh, there be small ponds or small ponds that you can see in these wetlands some can be permanent and some can be seasonal seasonal means it will be wet for one month two month and then it will be it will dry out like that in especially in rainy season it becomes wet then after rainy seasons it just dries out such places are called the wetlands now you learned about natural water sources that is rivers ponds lakes streams and wetlands now um, we'll see a little bit about man made water sources the other ones are natural water sources which are naturally present on the earth okay these are man made water sources what are the types of man made water sources man made water sources are canals and reservoirs now canals and reservoirs we will learn uh, about them properly in the next video so i hope you understood what are the surface waters and what are the natural water sources so stay at home stay safe take care of yourself and keep learning children i hope you are doing the exercises in your textbooks and your workbooks find out the answers and write them in the both the books thank you children